The third way to get slope, it says, is to use the equation. And that's what you guys are used to. You're used to me giving you the equation and asking you questions about it. Last module, I was giving you the equation and asking you to tell me what type of line it is and to draw a picture, graph it. Today, I'm going to give you the equation, and I'm not going to ask you to draw a picture of it. I'm going to ask you one thing and one thing only, to tell me the value of the slope. So the important thing is memorizing concepts. And there's no easy way to do this, guys and gals. You have to memorize. If the diagonal line goes up, the slope's going to be a positive number. If the diagonal line goes down, the slope's going to be a negative number. If the, the line is horizontal, it's not going up, it's not going down, it's staying steady, the slope is zero. And if the line is vertical, the slope is called undefined. It doesn't exist. So let's look here. I believe we have three examples, so let's go to the whiteboard on this. Okay. So, we have three equations. f of x equals 6. x plus 4 equals negative 9. 3x minus 4y equals 12. Why are they all equations? Very good. Going all the way back to module 1, an equation has an equal sign. Now, I'm not asking you to draw a picture of these, but I'm telling you, you can never answer a question about graphing till you first make a decision. And the main decision is, because we're graphing lines, you should be able to look at these equations and tell what type of line it is. From the last module, we've already discussed this. You know by looking at the variables what type of line it is. If a line only touches the y-axis, it's horizontal. So that's why if we see just the letter Y, we know it's a horizontal line. If a line just touches the vertical, the x-axis, it's vertical. So see, I'm only touching the x-axis. I'm vertical. That's why its equation only has the letter X in it. And if a line touches both axes, the X and the Y, it's going to be diagonal, whether it goes up or it goes down. If it touches both axes, it's diagonal. That's why its equation will have both variables, x and y. So here we go, guys. Before you ever do anything with graphing, before you even try to answer the question, we've already discussed this. Decide what type of line it is. So when you're given an equation, decide which line it is. Well, out of all three of these, it's very obvious. Number three has an x and a y. So we know that this is a diagonal line. Equation 2 has just the letter x, so that must be a vertical line. Now, equation 1 doesn't have an x. It has an f of x. We've already discussed this. This is called function notation. It is just a way to name something. Remember I called this Fred? I told you over and over again, anytime you see function notation, cross it out and put it in place of it the variable y. So any time you see something named f of x, and we're talking about graphing, cross it out and put what variable? y. Well, now this says y equals 6. If you just have the variable y, it's a horizontal line. Now that we know which types of lines these are, we're going to answer the question. The question did not say draw a picture of it. The question says find the slope. When they ask for slope, they're asking for an answer that's a number. So all I want to know is what m equals. Well, if you know for sure y equals 6 is a horizontal line, which it is, because if you drew a picture, you go to the y-axis to the number 6, you'd plot a point, and then you would draw your line. You could now tell me the slope. Is that line going up? No. Is it going down? No, it's staying steady. What number shows the slope is staying steady? Zero. So you have to memorize this fact. Buy yourself some index cards, write these facts down. If it's a horizontal line, what is always the slope? Zero. You won't see the zero in the equation, you just got to know that the slope is zero. On the second equation, we had an x, so we know it's a vertical line. If I asked you to draw the picture of it, you're right, 
you would subtract 4, you would get x equals negative 13. So you would go to the x-axis, you'd go to negative 13, which is somewhere back here, you'd plot a point, and draw a vertical line. Okay? Now, if you look at that, it's vertical. It's not staying steady. You can't say the slope is zero. What you've got to remember is slope is talking about movement. No one is going to move vertically. If you skied vertically, you would kill yourself. So we talk about this. The slope of a vertical line doesn't exist. It's undefined. You have no work to do. So anytime you're asked the slope of a vertical line, that's always the answer. Put that on an index card. The third equation, though, is diagonal. It has an x and a y. Well, we already discussed this. To draw a picture of it, it has to be in what form? Good. It has to be in slope-intercept form. What is slope-intercept form? Awesome. It's y equals mx plus b. We discussed this. Anytime I want to know anything about a diagonal line, you must get the variable y by itself. So to get y by itself, we're going to subtract 3x. We're going to get, watch your signs, negative 4y equals, we're going to put the x part first, so that's negative 3x, and that's a positive 12. Do we have it in slope-intercept form? No, we do not. The y is not by itself. So to move the negative 4, we have to do division. And if we divide one term by negative 4, we divide all the terms by negative 4. Okay, we did this in the last module. The two negative 4s cancel out. There's the y equals. 3 doesn't divide by 4, but a negative over a negative is a positive. So that's 3 fourths x. 12 divided by negative 4 will divide and gets negative 3. So in the last module, once you got the diagonal line in slope intercept form, you were able to draw the picture of it. So if I asked you to draw a picture of this, you'd be fine. You would know what number is the slope. Good. The m, which means multiply, is 3 fourths. What number is the y-intercept? B means behind. That's negative 3. So if I ask you to graph the diagonal line, just to review, do we use slope first or the y-intercept first? Very good. B means you begin on the y-axis. So we begin on the y-axis at negative 3. The slope is 3 fourths. That explains our movement. Because 3 is positive, we go up 1, 2, 3. And because 4 is positive, we go to the right 1, 2, 3, 4. And do you agree that makes a diagonal line? Now, I didn't have to do that. I just want to make sure you review what we did in the last module. The directions in this module just say find the slope. Do you really need to have the picture to explain the movement? No. You knew the slope was right here. Once you get the equation in slope-intercept form, you know the slope. So we would just say for this one, the slope is 3 fourths. I understand this line is going to move up 3 to the right 4 to make each of the points. So that's how you use the equation to get the slope. If the equation is horizontal or, dia or, horizontal or vertical, there's no work. If the equation is a horizontal line, the slope is always 0. If the equation is a vertical line, the slope is always undefined. But if it's a diagonal line, if it has the x and the y, you have to isolate y to get the number for slope. So far, so good? All right, we got one more thing to talk about. Let's go back to the notes.